Hi, welcome back to CU Live. I'm Lauren Sega, Associate Editor with Columbus Underground. Today I have with me John Barker, President and CC CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association. Welcome, John. Thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, so today we're talking about the employment drought. I mean, half my job is reporting on restaurant openings and closures, and I feel like a lot of times I've been seeing that people are citing uh, lack of employment, lack of talent as the reason why they're shuttering their doors. Just coming to mind is Just Pies. They closed mm -hmm. two locations. Right. Westie, you cited that as a reason. I know Flatiron Grill, they were here for over 20 years. And um, I know that they'd been looking for um, uh, for workers several months before they eventually closed. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah. I guess, first of all, uh, if you just look at the kind of the macro business, uh, the amount of restaurants that opens up every year is always a net positive. So more restaurants open uh, than close. And so the number of restaurants uh, in the state of Ohio, for example, uh, you know, goes up every year, even though it's kind of hard to imagine there's room, you know, for, for more. Uh, but in the state, we have uh, listed about 22,000 locations that call themselves a restaurant or food service or, you know, something like that. And um, so that puts a lot of pressure on employment. Uh, you know, it's um, oftentimes um, uh, a field where people uh, make an entire career, which is, is fantastic. But our, our industry does rely on young people, you know, who are in college or high school who want that part-time job and, and um, that's an area we're seeing a lot of pressure because there's so many jobs available not just in the restaurant space that young people were you know even probably a decade ago a lot of young people would you know make that first job in a restaurant maybe that second job in a restaurant today there are other opportunities that uh, make it difficult in that particular space so that's some of the pressure that we're, we're seeing yeah right and I was thinking too um, is there as many people going into the restaurant industry saying, this is my career, this is what I would do with my life? Mm -hmm. Or like, as you said, is it, is it more of a part-time career for some people, mm -hmm. for most people? Yeah, it's, it's really um, dependent you know, on where. So for example, in the city of Columbus, a good example, this has become a foodie town now mm -hmm. uh, with all the restaurants. This is absolutely a career. Um, you have you know, big, well-known organizations that are based here. Wendy's is you know the largest restaurant company in the state, but you have the White Castles of the world, you have the Cameron Mitchells of the world, very well known. You know they're based here in Columbus, and people who go there really are looking uh, for a career. Many of them start at the restaurant uh, and then move, you know move from there. Some of them stay in the restaurant, and some of them then move up into kind of above the restaurant uh, if they want to be in a career where they might want to manage multiple locations, which is a, a dream for some people. Um, and then others want to get into culinary or uh, other support roles, you know, in uh, in organizations. And so, yeah, Columbus is, has really changed uh, from that standpoint. You have a big group of people who see this as, as a career. Mm -hmm. We see it also in places like Cleveland and Cincinnati. They have a really big culinary scene that has um, improved just tremendously in the last 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you mentioned those bigger companies. I'm wondering about the difference. Like, is a Cameron Mitchell more likely to sustain its talent than like a mom and pop shop that just opens a one-off location. Yeah, this is uh, comes down to such a simple kind of principle, but it's hard to execute. And that is if you have a really good concept, uh, really good restaurant concept, and as part of that, your strategy includes uh, you know a very real deep focus on people, meaning that you you know are very careful about who you hire how you hire, once you do, what you do with folks once you get them on board. Mm -hmm. um, those are organizations that tend to do pretty well in all environments. And so uh, that doesn't mean they still don't have pressure to find people and keep people. It's just that you know, they have a better, they have a better you know, focus on human resources. And uh, Cameron Mitchell is pretty legendary with this, right? They, uh, they talk about people first all the time. And it's not just they talk about it, they actually do it. Right. And uh, so therefore, you know, their retention rates are higher than, uh, than maybe other companies that don't have that. But by the same token, for every Cameron Mitchell, uh, you know, I know a lot of owners uh, who may have one location and they're staffing and they're doing just fine, you know, because they have such a great operation and they treat people and they, they bring folks in and they know, well, maybe this young person's only gonna be with me for two years, but here's what I'm gonna do for that person, right? They're gonna get an opportunity to work here, get good hours, learn a lot of skills, and uh, even though they might go on and do something else after two years, that was a great experience for them. 
and then what great word of mouth that turns to, you know, uh, turns out to be in terms of advertising because then that young person tells another young person, right. hey, I had a great experience somewhere. You got to consider that for a job. So, sure. Yeah. Do you think retention at all has to do with healthcare benefits, things that people can get out of the job besides a paycheck? It's the whole. It's the whole package. Uh, some people, uh, if it's going to be your career, you're very interested in all that, right? You want to know what the compensation is, you want to know are there opportunities for benefits, uh, are there opportunities, for example, for advancement, are there opportunities for training inside of an organization. And that is somewhat dependent on the size of organizations. If it's, a, if it's literally a one person, or I mean a one location restaurant, it might be harder for that operator to offer all those things. Um, so they're at a little bit of a disadvantage from that standpoint um, because the restaurant business, you know, even though it's growing and there's, um, you know, a lot of excitement in, in the restaurant business, a lot of culinary excitement, um, you know, restaurant business can still be fairly tight margins from a profit standpoint. So uh, if you have one location, it may be difficult for you to do some of those additional things from a human resources standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, you, you've said before that uh, workforce is one of the number one, number one priorities for your organization for ORA. What kind of efforts are you working on in that realm? Mm -hmm. So we do um, uh, uh, research uh, regularly with our members and um, in addition to that we have access to the research that comes from the National Restaurant Association so that's the, the mothership to the, to the <laughs> ORA. And um, what's so great about that is that we see these trends, right? And we see it uh, real time. And one of the trends we saw in the last couple of years is that workforce went from number two or number three in terms of the concerns that restaurateurs have to number one. And it's now not even close. It's number one by, by a big distance. So knowing that, we, uh, as we put together our strategic plan looking out called Vision uh, 2022, uh, it came as one of our top five initiatives to focus on workforce. And so it's a major initiative we have underway. And it's, um, it's everything from simply um, in town here, we have a local restaurant alliance that we hold a meeting about every month. Local restaurant tours come together and we have different topics every month. Uh, at, that, uh, at those meetings, oftentimes we bring in groups that offer uh, and, uh, help to uh, potential employees who are coming through second chance opportunities. So we've had in um, uh, the Urban League, and we've had in uh, the Alvis House, and we've had in groups like that to uh, be able to communicate to our restaurant owners, here are some opportunities for you, you know, that you may not have thought about uh, as an opportunity to, to find workers, you know, to find people and give them that second chance. In our restaurant uh, business, you know, uh, this is full of people with big hearts, right? And you see that happen all the time. In fact, there are businesses in town that their entire model is based on that. So hot, hot chicken, chicken takeover, yeah. yeah. Everybody kind of knows what Joe's doing, uh, Joe DeLoss, and uh, it's great. You know what he's doing, it's great for society. It gives him sort of a um, point of differentiation that people know about. It's not in the back, it's actually very clear what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And these things are happening around the state. And so we're identifying those, and then we're trying to help champion that by bringing more attention to those. Uh, at our uh, annual awards that we do every year uh, for our industry, uh, one of the awards we gave is a you know kind of an inspiration award to a group out of Cleveland that does this second chance. Uh, it's called Edwin's Institute, and um, they have um, you know people who have you know come out of uh, jail uh, jail time, and they bring them in, no questions asked, and as long as they work hard, show up, they get all the training, they get culinary training, server training, host training, uh, you know sous chef training, everything you know, and um, and he knows he may keep them for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also knows that he's training people for other, many of them are going to go off and work for other great restaurants. Right. And that's the whole business model. So we're identifying those uh, organizations that are doing that and we're trying to publicize that, bring more attention to it. And then something that we have that's very unique, we have a, a program that we run called Ohio Pro Start. And Pro Start's a program that uh, sets up uh, culinary and management training for essentially juniors and seniors in high school. Okay. Um, we have 57 schools that we Start work them early. With. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so they get into that program. And so what we're working to do is connect all the young people who are coming into that program. And then we've, cr we've created a college consortium. So partnering with over 20 colleges and culinary schools and uh, community colleges around Ohio now we're building out this consortium to build this uh, group of schools that are ready for these young people coming out of these programs and offer them, in many cases, very nice scholarships to, to come uh, to their schools. 
So getting them into that uh, kind of post high school opportunity where they learn more and decide, does this, is this really what I want to do with my life? In many cases, the answer is yes, because they get to go through that experience. So they could come out of a certificate program or they could come out of a two year program or they could get a culinary degree. We have a great culinary school right here in Columbus, um, Columbus Culinary Bradford School. Uh, some of them go into a four year program. Uh, so for example, Ohio State has a hospitality program, which is a four year program. So what we're trying to do is set up this pathway for young people. It's hard, right? When you're 18, 19, what, what are you gonna yeah. do with your life? You know, it's very hard. And so creating this pathway, and then what we have at the end of that, right, is obviously, you know, kind of the, uh, the end of the rainbow. We have all the employers who have the jobs. Right. And so what we're trying to do is connect all the dots. We have the high school programs, we're now you know, connecting with all these great uh, culinary and uh, college programs and, and community college, and then connecting it out to our employers. And so that they're, they're ready. They might give those uh, young people who are going through that, might give them a part-time job or give them an internship, right? Mm -hmm. And start that pathway so they can actually see, hey, when I get through all this, I can actually go work in this industry and have a great job. Right, yeah. right. I wanna go back to what you were talking about with restored citizens and giving them a second chance. Um, I know that you po you pinpointed uh, specific businesses that are willing to take that on as their like sole workforce. Do you find it hard to, to popularize that idea among the restaurant world in general? Is there a hesitation or are we kind of moving past that? Yeah, I wish there was no hesitation. I don't think from a social standpoint, I don't think there's any hesitation. Our industry does tend to be some of my uh, peers, because I was in the restaurant business for a long time. I was at Wendy's uh, for um, almost 20 years, and my parents had a mom and pop. And some of my peers call us, we're the, the kind of the industry of misfits, right? That people just end up in this industry, even though they may not have thought they were going to, but they end up into it. Mm -hmm. But I don't really call it that. This is a, an industry of such big hearts, right? People that are in this industry who have a little bit of success, I've never seen an industry where people give back more than this one. And so socially, we're the industry, right? We're the ones that kind of get this the most. And so I, what I think is uh, the challenge sometimes of making those programs work, because it does require a little extra effort, it does require some paperwork, some follow-up, right? You have to work with people who might be coming off a difficult time in their life. And so, you, you know, you got to have programs ready for that. You just, right. it's not the same as hiring maybe a regular employee. But if the commitment is there, uh, we know that it works. And mm -hmm. I think that you know, with the um, employment uh, scenario as tight as it is, I think smart companies are gonna, gonna look at this more, like the, the Joe DeLoss model. Right? Right. He's turned this into something, and now you know, Joe had one location here in Columbus, and now he has multiple locations. He's going to Cleveland, you mm -hmm. know, and he, so he's taken the model, he's put the model again, now he's being able to stamp it in, in he's additional places. He's shown it places. can succeed, yeah. Yeah, and it works, mm -hmm. yeah. And, it's, and by the way, it's very inspirational. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into Hot Chicken and meet a couple of the employees, which I've done, and uh, you know, it's inspirational to hear their stories, and they're turning their lives around, and they, they love the industry now. And what they really love is they've found a home, and uh, they have that heart for hospitality. Okay. and they get a chance to use it, so it's mm -hmm. exciting to see it. It's going beyond the factors that we've kind of already discussed. I know that the unemployment rate in general is at a low. Maybe not the national average. I know the national average is around 3.6, mm -hmm. and we're hovering around like 4.6. Mm -hmm. um, does that have anything to do with it, or people just, they don't need jobs, they're, they're employed elsewhere? <laughs> yeah. Well, the numbers are just the numbers, right? Those are the averages. We know that uh, kind of behind the numbers, uh, high school kids today have more opportunities than ever, and that's just that's just the truth, right? And because uh, if you look at it over time, look at the data, uh, the number of jobs, and so they can be picky. Um, you know, when the economy is more difficult, you don't have that opportunity, or you got to got to take whatever job is, is sort of out there. But that goes in cycles. Right. But you know, so if let's just say the unemployment rate is four percent in the state of Ohio, let's just say that, but. Then you start looking into cohorts, right? You look at age cohorts, and it might be higher for people who are at an older age. It might be uh, much lower for people who have great education. We know if you get into the minority communities, it gets up into the double digits. And so, you know, we have a, um, uh, a minority community of many types in, in Columbus. Uh, we have a, a big population of Somali immigrants. Right. And, um, and so getting them all inculcated into the community and feeling it making their, their comfortable going into jobs and professions maybe that they hadn't thought of and making sure that we create, create those pathways for them so they can get enough training to make that entry. That's, that's really, the, that's, I think, the important point. And, and fortunately we have in Columbus, um, 
you know, with the mayor and city council um, and all the local business groups, they do work together here mm -hmm. really well. Uh, and you hear that a lot, right? How the Columbus we, way. Yeah, we cooperate, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. so that's our that's our opportunity to keep keep working that to get those unemployment rates down uh, in all these categories, all these cohorts, and uh, and that would be good for Columbus. Now, that may not be great for the restaurant industry, right? Because, uh, but if you can get more people engaged in wanting to, you know, get into these jobs, and particularly, you know, the restaurant industry is a fun place to work. It really is. You know, you, um, you're around typically a lot of energy, and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun, and people are happy when they come into your restaurant when you're working there. It's almost like anything, there's nothing like it, really, you mm -hmm. know. Um, Maybe some retail jobs are like that, but retail's changing so dramatically. Um, the restaurant business uh, is still, you come into to a location if you go to the location. You still uh, want that experience. Yeah, yeah, that's why you're going out. Mm -hmm. right? All right, well, this has been John Barker with the Ohio Restaurant Association. Thank you so much for joining me. Sure, glad to be here. Thanks.